This is why. Or why not? With, with the, the Watsons. Watsons. Okay, moms, I got you. Today we're having a conversation about how to get dads involved in talking about hard things with your kids. I don't know, relationships, scripture memory, S-E-X. How do we get them to talk? Liftable.tv and join the conversation. Welcome to Why? Or Why Not? With, with the, the Watsons. Watsons. Okay, moms, I got you. I got you on this episode because this episode is talking about how to get dads involved in the conversation. What and what conversation, conversation yeah, you what might conversation? ask. Yeah, what conversation? I don't know. The talk to your kids about sex conversation, talk to your kids about masturbation, talk to your oh. kids about, I don't know, discipline, talk to them about what they should be doing, just talking to them in general. And let me just say, this is not all moms who want this and it's not all dads who don't do this, but I do think, generally speaking, <clears throat> we tend to have these conversations with our kids easier than dads do. So why is it, why is it so awkward yeah. for you all to have these tough conversations about stuff that you already know about and you've experienced? Well, Tell me. first of all, first of all, I'll say this. Um, I don't have the exact stats on hand, but I do know that women <laughs> speak something like 20,000 words a Stop. day or something like that. I think like that's that. an old fact. And we all speak. Facts are facts. Stop. If it's true, it's true. Like, what do you it's mean it's an old fact? It's, it's been updated. That we... It's true. Okay, go ahead. Even Watch the show. Who's okay. gonna, she's going to talk more than I am. <laughs> you speak about 20,000 words a day and we have, I don't know, 20 or something. <laughs> so, so it's difficult to waste waste our time our speaking we, we get exhausted so we, we we talk to the kids but we're not gonna have these long conversations we don't have long conversations with you i mean let's <laughs> just be so honest like, like bad. you, you so all honest. have a lot of practice talking okay it comes from within mm -hmm. uh, for us it's a little more difficult not all dads not all men um but it seems to be that way i think that the stat is pretty good so that's the first reason the second reason is I don't know what to say. <laughs> what do you mean? You do such a better job. I mean, talking you, to the kids about if we're talking if they're fighting, like, and I'm saying, saying this is why we shouldn't fight. I mean, like, you have something to say. Yeah, like, stop you, fighting. The other than that is so hey, boy, obvious. Stop fighting. That more than that, like, I, we just need a conversation around why instead of just don't do something. I feel as though I can have a conversation around it, and you're just looking at me like this is this is why we compliment each other. Mm -hmm. This is why men and women compliment each other because. Women have strong points. Men have strong points. But together, Stop they it. are one. Okay, I and a will force say to this. be reckoned with. I'll say this. So in the beginning with our first couple of kids, I would say that you've grown to having these Thank tough you. conversations. But how did, I mean, I think there was a process of understanding that the conversations that we were having were important. Yeah. The time spending mm -hmm. with the kids was important. And it shouldn't always feel as though I'm the one initiating or doing it, that they need to hear from you. I think that's what I kept saying. I was like, they need to hear your perspective. They hear mommy's perspective all the time. And so yeah. on these, some of these big topics, it's important for it them to have your perspective as well. Like we're talking about boys. Yes, I'm gonna come in it with a particular worldview about it, but they need to know like what potentially could this knucklehead boy be thinking and why are they writing, do you like me, check the box? Like what is he thinking? You know, so, so the, the perspective oh, is so much more rich when it comes from both of us. I do think you've come a long way. So, <laughs> that's, that was a compliment. That a compliment? It was a compliment. Like, I'm supposed to just accept that and be happy about that? Yes. Uh, I have come a long way. Um, but I think part of it was and is, all right, look, let's just be honest. Part of it is because you kept telling me I need to have these conversations. Mm, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. But number two, it's because you realize the long-term goal you have for your children. This is good. And so if your goal as a parent or as a father in particular, as a papa bear uh, particularly, is to have a, a specific relationship with your kids, one of open dialogue, one of trust, uh, one of communication, one of intentionality, one of of love. It, like if you want your... If you want your teenage daughter or your 20 something year old daughter to come to you about how she's feeling about a guy like that doesn't just happen overnight. That has right. to be fostered. And so I think that for me, as our kids got older and as you start to hear and understand different adults relationship with their parents, mm -hmm. not just teenagers, but you see how some adults relate to their parents because of a lack of communication, not necessarily a lack of love, but just 
just a lack of entering to their world when they right. were younger, uh, you realize or I realize that I, I want to do whatever I can do to foster that relationship, even if it's uncomfortable. Right. And I because think, it is. Yeah, it is. Un- and I think some of us come <laughs> into even marriage with this idea of what you're supposed to talk about and what you're not supposed to talk about based on what you experience. Yeah, or based on if you're, if you're a, a woman a, or a, a man. Girl, like, or, yeah, girl, I think, woman talks about that, man talks about this. Right. It's like, so we're going to only talk about periods with our moms because that's yeah. they have one and they help us through. But we don't yeah. talk about that with our dads because that's just awkward for everybody. And so... Yeah. What I always pose to you is like, what if it wasn't awkward? Like, what if it was like, what if I'm out of town and one of our girls needs something and now they can't talk to you because they've yeah. never had a conversation about how they're changing or whatever. And they it's just a bad situation. So wouldn't it be better for them? It's OK. It's understandable that a child may come to one parent or the other more in whatever situation it is, but it's always important that I would say it's always important for them to have your perspective and know that you have them and understand Mm -hmm. and that you're part of the conversation because that will make for a much richer relationship down the line. Yeah. And, and, and going, so, so I did have a a period talk with, you know, it was so good. I heard it. It was, was, I was was. like, right on. You know, I I never would have (laughs) thought ever ever would have thought that I would have ever had that conversation Uh and 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 it it was it was awkward on the inside but but also I think it's putting your putting yourself back to when you were a child Mm -hmm. right it's only awkward because we're adults and whether our parents talked to us about certain issues or not we've kind of formulated who should talk about what because of our own experience right but but it's not awkward if you don't make it awkward right Fake you know, it till you make it. it, it, it fake it till you make it. It's not <laughs> awkward. If you don't make it awkward. And, and, for, and for the child, you know, talking to mom, like you said before, so, you know, depending on your, your cadence of life and who's out of the house more and who's mm-hmm. home. I mean, there's a certain comfortability that kids have with certain parents for certain things. But but a child doesn't um, inherently know that certain issues, you know, like a period or masturbation or, wearing you know, bra. wearing a bra or uh, the list goes on of awkward conversations that we all went through. They don't inherently know that I should only talk to mommy or daddy about this. Right. They'll talk to either one of you if you make yourself available mm-hmm. and if you have and if you're welcoming for the conversation, even if it's difficult for you. I remember like driving home from ballet or something and, you know, just asking a question and, and just identifying a lot, a lot with what you told me. So another thing is take 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 cues from your spouse uh, or the mother or father of your child about the things that were difficult for them in talking to their mom or to their dad and yeah. try and try to bridge that gap. Bridge the, and I think, too, whatever parent they come to first, like right now we're talking about dads, but it's like if if a daughter comes to me and says, hey, mom, mommy, this is going on or this is how I'm feeling, you know, you want to give, you know, advice. But you also want to say, you know what, daddy probably has a great, this is a good a good opportunity for moms to build up the dad. Be like, he probably mm. has a great perspective on this. We should ask him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, I don't want to go by myself. I was like, I'll come. I think it could be a good conversation. So then, you know, I give Benjamin the, the, the goods on the other end. And I'm like, okay, this is what's going on. Here it is. Here Step it up is. to the plate, man. So, you know, get your answer right. And so yeah. then when, when the daughter comes, and hopefully soon it'll be the son comes yeah, opposite way. You know, you're prepared, you know how to, you know, whatever. And it's just like, we're, we're a team. At the end of the day, yeah. it's like, we're a team. And so it's realizing that it's not all of one person's responsibility when we're in the marriage together to have these difficult conversations over these issues that they're yeah. going to, they're, they're dealing with. Yeah. But the fact remains that <laughs> <laughs> that after we, after the whole intro, the fact remains that it seems to be more difficult for dads to be involved in those conversations than for moms. Yeah. Part of that is because of a bunch of different issues, but that doesn't preclude dads from our responsibility to, to be involved. <clears throat> right. And you, you, you brought up a great point when you say that it's important that kids hear dad's perspective because we have a different perspective mm-hmm. on purpose. Mm-hmm. God created us to have a different perspective, right? Create us to have a different style of leadership, a different, a different style of care for our kids. And so if you withdraw from that, um, for whatever reason, some of those reasons could be failure in a specific area in your childhood, um, embarrassment uh, because of whatever the issue is, uh, inadequacy. Mm-hmm. You know, quite honestly, some some dads 
don't feel equipped. Like we literally don't feel equipped to talk about certain things because we just haven't learned about them. Like right. we don't feel equipped to talk about right. it. Right. And so many times what men do is we we retreat to mm-hmm. save face. Right. And so if we don't know something and uh, we don't want to seem that we're a, a buffoon and don't know, then we'll retreat in order to save face. Mm-hmm. Um, another reason why we retreat, as I mentioned before, is if there's a certain level of, of guilt. Like I don't want to have this conversation about X, Y, and Z because I'm struggling with that or I fail with that. Right. And I'm strong. I'm the leader. I'm the head of the household. I don't want to look like I'm not that. Right. Even, even to my child. Right. Um, yeah. And so we put up a facade. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it, it does a disservice. But mo- the number one, the most important thing, like I said before, was I want to have a relationship with our children. It's not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Our relationship is never going to be perfect. We're going to wound each other. I'm going to wound them because... I'm, I'm a sinner like everybody else, but I want to have long term as it become teenagers. I want them to be able to come to me and tell me stuff mm-hmm. and ask my opinion mm-hmm. and and care about what I say. Yeah. You know, I want those lines to be open, but it has to be built with the right foundation. Yeah. I mean, gosh, there were so many good points in there. And I think that can go for mom and dad. I don't I want to stay on topic with the conference you made about involving dads. But I do think. When we have our kids and when these things come up, it really does make us, it should make us go to the cross and repentance in those areas. And remember mm-hmm. also to go to the cross and remember the forgiveness and grace that's been given to us mm-hmm. in making those mistakes. And so that when we we approach our children with these conversations, it's not as though we are coming from a place of done it, doing it perfectly or doing it, um, you know, like having all the answers. I think the the humanness of this whole thing is that, hey, I was once this age and I, you know, this is my story or and this is, that's, you know, appropriate for the age of the kid, but this is mm. under, like, this is how you see, you show God's, God's grace and mm. mercy in your life. And so we have to remember, it's not about you. Like, it's not about you mm. and your awkwardness and your, and, you know, it's, it's pointing them hopefully to the one who is perfect. And so I yeah. think as long as we can get ourselves out of the way and think that the story has to be perfect for them to be perfect, when we realize that you're not. And That's so we good. just point people back, point people back to the one yeah. who is, and it lets us off the hook in sense of, of having to make everything look like we have it all together. Yeah. So, and you can actually like lead in with that too. Yeah, like you can lead I think in it's with, a great place. With, I mean, with, it's the with, best place to start. <laughs> yeah, lead in, lead in with, look, I, I really want to be there for you. I want to support you. I don't have all the answers. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to mess this thing up, but I want you to know that I care about what you're going through. Yeah, that's good. So what are yeah. some of the things you think back? Uh, we've kind of mentioned some of the, uh, the conversations that have happened. Uh, what are some of the things that you think were the best ways to help get you more like out of your comfort zone in terms of talking or being? Okay, so the biggest things? the biggest one I had an issue with is uh, what was the name of that book you got? Uh, for the boys. Well, actually, for all the kids. The one about oh. the body parts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's it called? We're call? starting very basic, aren't we? <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, that, like, okay, you, you talk to your boys about, you know, all the terms. All the terms, like the real terms, and w- what is sex? Why can we what not like it? So I all of a sudden got really hungry. Because longer. this is what you told me. I'm, I'm mimicking you. <laughs> oh, okay. You told me I need to talk. You need to talk to the boys about this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. So you had this book, right? We lost the book, or whatever. But the main point was <laughs> the main point was we lost the main book. point was don't. I don't know where that book is. Oh, I don't know either. I, 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 I don't have it. Okay. I hope you don't need it. <laughs> okay. The main point. You said the main thing is. Just, just, just tell them, just tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, it, it's not funny. God created it. Like, like, oh, we're talking yeah. about sex. Yeah, talking about sex, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I remember going into um, the boys' room at night <laughs> one time and, and one of them, you know, oh, yeah. asked, me, asked me something about boobies. Uh-huh. Right? Why do people call them boobies? Why do people call them boobies? And so <laughs> I didn't have a good answer to that question. Like, I don't know why, <laughs> but we did have a good conversation about, you know, what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what what the proper term is. What they are. Yeah. What the Sorry, pro- just... what, what, why are you giggling? Yeah. What 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 the proper term is? Um, the fact that you know you respect women. Mm-hmm. You know all the stuff that adds on from that. So this is the term. It's okay for you to like them. Mm-hmm. That's how you you. That's how you were made. So that's definitely okay. Um, the fact that you respect 
you know, women that you don't touch people, you don't say something about somebody's boobies. Mm -hmm. You know, all those all all those sorts of ancillary conversations we were able to have. And it's always at night when kids ask these questions. Why don't they ask me that jump before seven thirty? Like they always want to ask stuff exactly after. But but the point is to give them matter of fact answers about the truth of what happened. Don't take my baggage or my slang terms and all the knowledge that I have and 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 throw it and and either throw it on them or make or make me feel like I can't talk about it because of all this other sin baggage that I have right. about the female body and the male body. Right. Like, so answered the question that they exactly. have, like not all the other stuff and just and you realize like do you have any other questions they'll say. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm like all right, that's good. Yeah. We're good. But, but the do you have any questions part is great because do you have any other questions? And then after that, I said, well, if you do ever have any questions, right. come ask me. Mm-hmm. And so lo and behold, you know, two weeks later, there's another question. Heard, heard something at school or saw some or just thought about something mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, ask me whenever you have a question, a- ask me. And so just opening that line at this age for them, specifically with boys, um, I think it's, it's, it's great because it's going to allow me to keep speaking into their life. It's and, and there's a trust factor there. Like, like They can come ask daddy. Yeah. Well, what's funny is they ask daddy, but then they come tell me like, mommy, daddy said that they are called this, but we really should say that. And I'm like, he, they're like, is that right? I'm like, yeah, daddy, daddy got it. Do you know? So it's, it's always a way like, you know, they're, they're checking, they're doing their own yeah. checks and balances with things, yeah. but it's like, you're, we're on the same page. Like it's important to, have the conversation, keep it open, mm-hmm. and let them invite them back in because something else is bound to, yeah, to happen. Yeah. And, then, and then also there's there's the the uh, preemptive conversations. Yes. So there's the forecasting. Mm-hmm. And we recently had, um, so we did like, so, so I guess we'll talk about it, but but part of the ways for dads to get involved, I think, is to, to create special moments with your children. Mm. So whether that's one-on-one, we have seven, one-on-one is difficult, but we try to do it when we can. I mean, it can be something as simple as getting on the floor with them if they're young, playing, you know, going in their room, reading a book, having a conversation after that. We we did a daddy-daughter and daddy-son trips this year where we went on like two-day trips. And so within those, I'm able to have, you know, conversations with the girls about not only their hopes and their dreams and talk about my hopes and dreams, but also talk about the what the future looks like for, for dating. Yeah, because they're in they're, middle school. Because they're in middle school. Mm-hmm. And people are starting to pair off. Mm-hmm. People are starting to write little notes. Like, do you like me? Check yes or no. <laughs> people are giggling and all that type of stuff. And so, is there anybody that you, yeah. you know, think is attractive, that you like? And mm-hmm. what does that mean? What does mm-hmm. that mean for them? Mm-hmm. What do you expect from them? Setting the standard high for them. Then with the boys, it, we left to go on a trip with the boys and, and Kirsten's like, don't come back here if you didn't talk about pornography. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like eight and nine. Don't come back if you didn't talk about that. <laughs> they need to know the terms. They so need to you know go ahead and get that out work. there. It's, it's like they, need, they need to be ready for this because somebody's going to show them something on the phone. Yeah. And so, lo and behold, <laughs> um, you know, had the conversation with them because I know how I was wounded by that. I know how somebody just dropped that on me one day. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, un- I didn't ask for it. Somebody, so- and someone is going to present certain things to our children. Yeah. And so, even if they don't get it now, I told my, I told my boys at some point, someone's going to show you something, mm-hmm. and you might actually like it. Mm-hmm. At, at that point, you might actually like it. Come tell me. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And all, already planting the seeds for the future. Right. Um, but again, like dads, we do so well. We do so well with planning our lives and being intentional with our work and prepping. Um, for our speeches or for our board meetings or whatever it is we're going to do out there. We do very well with that. Um, we need to take that same approach when it comes to engaging with our children. Yeah, no, it's so good. And I would say to the moms, a little side note is allow your men to lead in the way that they do. So sometimes, like, yes, of course, I was like, you talk about these issues because and the sperm I sperm on when they <laughs> yeah. But how they do that is like up to them. Like it's okay for it to look different than how you would want it because that's supposed to look different. Mm-hmm. And so even if you're, I'll say we had um, one of our kids came home and they had said, oh well, this one a guy boy came up to me and said this other boy likes me and I didn't know what to do and what does that mean that he likes me? So she had all these questions and she said, so I just said. 
didn't know what to say. And so she's telling me this. And I, so I bring Benjamin in. I'm like, okay, so let me just tell you, here's what's going on. She's going to come talk to you. She gave me a scout room. Gave me a scout room. Yeah. So we all are sitting there. And let me tell you, she, Benjamin started talking about cakes. He's like, you know, there's a bunch of cakes. Yeah, and, and I was just on board with supporting him. Then all of a sudden in my, my head said, where are you going with this? story. And so I'm just letting, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, just encouraging. And to the point where the, my daughter goes, wait, so are girls the cakes? And I was like, where? Because she yes. saw your face. You didn't just let no, me finish like, my analogy. I was analogy. facing away from you her on purpose. Finish. My point is you did the whole cake analogy and then you pick one cake that you like the most out of all the other cakes. And I was like, <laughs> oh Lord, what are we talking about? But the point is I wouldn't have done it that way. I didn't do it that way, but that's how we Daddy did it. And she was vibing with that. And that was good. And so she had followed. So, so, you, so you're saying that like me, this you think, and what should I do? And it was just really beautiful to support my daughter and that she didn't want to do it by herself. You know, like it was just, it's just very awkward for, not awkward, but it's just a new thing. Mm. And for us to all be talking about it, the three of us and her engaging with Benjamin to say like, what is this boy thinking? And <laughs> him being able to answer. And so there's a, Moms, it's it's important for us to let them lead in that way. Even if it's a silly story about cakes, it'll somehow <laughs> work its way out, right? It'll somehow work its way into, you know, like the heart behind it is so mm-hmm. good. And so, you know, it's important for us to encourage that and say, when our, when our kids tell us something, say, well, you know, we need to tell daddy. And they're like, Oh Why? yeah, talk about that. Keeping secrets. I think that's, Keeping I think secrets. that's something that's, that's, yeah. That's something that handicaps a lot of relationships, I think, hamstrings relationships when one parent has secrets over there. And, and when the kids know that they can go tell one parent something and the other parent's not going to know. Yeah, well, our kids know that I don't play that <laughs> because if they do tell me first, which, you know, for the most part has happened with our olders, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you got to tell daddy. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, like he needs to know. And so there's always this you know, re, you know, referring back or in, involving up both of us because we are a team. And so, you know, I tell my my kids, I'm like, we can't help what we don't know. Yeah. So if you don't tell us, we can't help you. We can't protect you. We can't do any of those. We can't pray for you mm-hmm. if you don't tell us. So if you tell one of us, it's like telling both of us because we both want the best for you. We both are going to go to bat for you. We both are going to like help you fight this um, battle or whatever is going on together. So we both need to know. And so I think that's another way to help dads get in the conversation. Cause if we can't do it together, it's like, Hey, can you just bring this up to this child? They're, they're struggling with this. So that way you guys have kind of a planned organic conversation. Yeah, I think, I think another, another thing that we're managing right now or navigating is the friend, the friends. And so again, our, our kids are the oldest are in middle school, but they're starting to, you know, get friends. I'm going to go over this friend's house. Uh, just trying to navigate who's a good friend. What does it mean to have have good company and bad company? Mm-hmm. Talking about peer pressure and all those sorts of things. And as a father, you you want to protect your children. Yeah. Um, you want to protect them physically, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, but it's difficult to do that if you don't know who their friends are. Mm-hmm. Like it's difficult to do that if you don't if you know nothing about their friends. So I mean, one of our policies is we. We want to know the kids' parents. Like, if you're going to go over somebody's house, we didn't know the parents. Now, everybody's different, but my point is that being engaged with your children uh, increases the chance of you getting to know some of their friends as well. Right. And so when I'm thinking about wanting to protect them, then, you know, laying that foundation now and getting to know their friends, you know, and, and asking them about their friends. So I, talk, I call them like organic opportunities. So we all have these organic opportunities to engage with our kids. Mm-hmm. Now it's, you know, picking them up from practice, um, picking them up from school, uh, taking them on like the daddy daughter dates, whatever that is, being at the house at the dinner table. We all have these organic opportunities. And so sometimes instead of riding in the car, listening to the radio, mm-hmm. which I've done with my child, it's turn it down, and ask who, what, when, where, and why. Yeah. Doesn't have to be a long conversation. It just has to be something. It's just this conversation starter. Yeah, that's so good. I just think, you know, 
it's it and I will say this from a mother's perspective, it helps when you're on board with with talking with them too. So I do think it's like you realize that you go through these stages of just keeping people alive. <laughs> like we're just making sure you're clean, you're fed and you're alive. To like now we're like managing heart stuff. Mm-hmm. And so we're moving <laughs> into that the upper elementary school, middle school age. You know, we have 2-year-olds who are still we're just trying to keep them alive. So, you know, you start moving to something different. It feels different. And it can be feel like not like a burden in a bad way, but you just feel like this is really heavy. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm the one who's carrying most of that heaviness for our kids, it's really challenging. And so it's 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 such a relief just if you, if there's dads out there hearing this who have not done this, like the weight gets lit when it's dispersed, when it's we're going in this as a partnership. It feels as though we like we can pray through this together. We both know things. It's such a it's 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 um it almost makes it fun to do. Does mm. that make sense? It's like it's a hard thing, but we're doing this together to pray for our kid in this way. And so I just would say just the more you're involved, the 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 more the kids we're able to like build you up even more than we mm. already do, but it just allows for some of that burden of the heart issues um to get to get more yeah. evenly dispersed. Yeah. I was listening to a a message by a favorite pastor, uh, Dr. Tony Evans, and I don't remember the specific verse he was speaking from, but he just kind of turned the whole like it's just mom's responsibility to, you know, feed the kids, teach the kids, do everything in the house. And it's only the man's responsibility on the outside of the house. He like turned that totally on his head and and only, you know, he can only way he can. can, Right. (laughs) Uh, But his point was he was going through scripture and he was saying, like, no, like dad's. If we look at scripture, like you are ultimately responsible. It's not, it's not that mom doesn't have a role and mm-hmm. that you don't do things together, but like you are responsible. Stops with you. Yes. Mm-hmm. The buck stops with you, but you are also responsible actively to, to teach and to lead and to converse with and to care for and to love your kids. Yeah. Like there's not this, this, uh, you know, partition between mom just does this and dad just does that Mm -hmm. actually biblically like you're it stops with you and you're supposed to be doing a lot more than what a lot of you are doing yeah and it was it was just really challenging to kind of shift our thinking um specifically on this conversation about dads getting involved in the conversation to know dads you are you are commanded you're mandated to get involved in the conversation yeah um even if you don't feel like it yeah. And it doesn't, like I said, I have to keep saying this because we women will hear this and be like, go listen to this podcast because <laughs> <laughs> you need to lead better. You know, and it's just, it's just different. And so like what you mentioned, we've mentioned before in other places about like us memorizing scripture. I like to do it on a post-it note and let's do hand motions and make up songs and whatever. And that's, the kids love it. That's not it. you. You're going to read yeah. through, you're going to do it your way and how you lead. And so I think that's that creates fruit for everyone, you know? And it's not just mommy always does the scripture and she always, you know, daddy does, daddy's reading through Proverbs and like everybody, it's mm. like everybody does, like we both can lead in the way that we are been called, what our, how we, you know, lean toward, mm. you know, doing things. But it's just so special when they know that this is how daddy does this part or yeah. daddy does it this way. And, and I love, and I just, and I get to sit back and mm. learn too. It's like, I get a chance to like, just watch them watch you lead and that is so special to see so again for the moms out there like let him do it with how how he wants to do it you encourage it and let him go yeah but but doesn't that go back but doesn't that go back to the garden right no for sure and we talked about we talked about reading through scripture and but doesn't that go back to the garden to man and woman standing there Mm -hmm. you know the serpent comes yeah man doesn't say anything and doesn't do his job yeah you Eve, Eve does, does, uh, you know, eats the fruit, engages with the serpent. The man standing right there, not covering over his, his wife and by extension, his family. And we deal with the same thing. Yeah. Like we have this, this innate, as men, we have this innate, you know, fleshy desire to not take care of our responsibility. And mm-hmm. we got it from our, our earthly father, Adam. Yeah. And so it's not a surprise when we see this happening. But what we do need, however, um, what I need definitely is the power of the spirit in order to do that which is uncomfortable and that which I feel inadequate to do. Yeah, it's good. Gotta do it. Uh, I love it.
So we'll have some more of those tough conversations <clears throat> with our kids. <laughs> but another conversation that we have is why are your cold feet on me? Well, can you just lead up a little bit better than that? Why are my cold feet on you? First of all, you're hot. Okay, why? The question whoa, 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 is. Whoa, wait a minute. Why are my cold feet on you at night? Because you're like a blazing fire. I don't know why you're so hot. And I'm freezing because you want to have it so cold in the room. And so because it's so cold in the room, it my feet First of all, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look, we didn't live in Boston, Massachusetts, <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana. There's nothing Cleveland, to do Ohio, with the temperature. Baltimore, Maryland, in the room, Atlanta, Georgia. Stop. And your feet are always cold. Yes. it doesn't. It, it doesn't the room matter. Is cold. It the doesn't room matter is where cold. we are. Like you're always cold. But if your feet are cold, then why do they have to be on me? Why not? You're so hot. Look at that right now. I have no socks on. You're still so warm. Oh, your feet are cold too. <laughs> and it's not even cold in here. Yes, it is. I don't know. Just why not accept it? Just know that it's just let it let it warm up a little bit and then we'll be fine. This is something that I know I'm not the only one. Like y'all are just I know hot. I'm not the only one either. Oh, stop. Like why are your cold feet on me? Whatever. This is why. Or why not? With the watching. Nice.